So now we're going to look at the guillotine from the other side, finishing it from the ground. Okay. This is one of the most common submissions, um, no gi and may street fighting, for a very simple reason. His main defense to it is he can never bend over or look down, which is really, really hard to do in a fight. At some point, somebody's going to put their head down, maybe throwing punches, maybe getting tired, maybe in a scramble, they'll put their head down for a second, you're going to get caught. Okay? So, <clears throat> we're going to do it from the ground, okay, but it's the same principle. If we're here, you know, you see it in the mail a lot of times because guys are taking body shots, look what happened to his head, right? Or they're defending, or he's going for a takedown on my legs. Here. And that's how Isaiah got his. Okay? So, we're going to do it from the guard. First, we're just going to go over some, some general concepts. Okay. If you guys, this is, I'm not a businessman. It's just kind of more of a joke than a business thing, but if you guys want five hours on this, that's my DVD. Okay. <laughs> code. But we'll just start here. Just some basic principles. Okay. You saw what we did to defend the last time. We tilted this shoulder here because when I do this, for him to pull my head down, there's no choke. When is this, I get in trouble. So the battle is really going to be that. Can I drive my head up and the other shoulder down? For the finish, it's the opposite. Okay? You always learn two lessons in every class. If you learn how to do a double leg, you should also understand how to defend a double leg. If you learn how to escape side control, you should understand some of the ideas for holding someone in side control. Today we're actually going to literally do both sides. So we'll just kind of start here, not in any particular guard, just to learn it. Okay. There's a lot of different guillotines, a lot of different ways. We're just going to go over basic first. <clears throat> a lot of different grips. Grips don't matter. Okay. People try to come up with a magic super grip. This is the way you should. All a grip does is secure a connection. If the connection is bad, the grip will never matter. Does that make sense? If I have an old rotten door and I put a thousand dollar lock on it, you just push the, you just break the door. Does that make sense? Okay, so when I go through, the bone is gonna be in his neck. My other hand, we're gonna come over and hold. Now, in the beginning, you learn, shoot your arm all the way through, grab your wrist. And that is correct. But I'm gonna kinda give you guys a little bit more advanced. Where I go is I actually just try to put that bone right there, the V for my form and my bottom of my thumb meet right in front, which means I can't grab my hand. So I actually kind of grab my fingers, like my knuckles right in my hand. So we just put here on your knees. So you guys will see. I just go right there. I don't go any further through. So I go further through, grab my arm. I just go right there, I lock my hands, and then I curl my hands. So the bone is right on his neck. You see the little dance? Okay. It's going to make it harder for him to grab, and it's going to put, we always want as much bone against the neck when we're doing chokes as possible, not soft part. Okay. So, set it down, I go and I find that exact spot, and we'll get into finding it in a second, and I lock my hands. Now, I don't want to lay back. Again, the battle is this. There's going to be three positions I can be in. Flat on my back, tilted to this side, or tilted to this side. This is ideal. This, I can maybe finish. This, I'm having a very hard time finishing. Because the whole point is, I want to choke him by bringing his neck face towards his body. Okay, so I'm talking a lot. This is my area of expertise, and I want you guys to just get a good advanced position on this. What I'm not doing is really using my arms that much. Arms are weaker than legs, legs weaker than back. Okay. What I'm trying to do is put this under his neck and then push his head down to choke him. I'm lifting, don't get me wrong, but I'm not just trying to push up with my arm. The choke is actually that. So when I go here, I fall to my shoulder. 
You see, I'm on my shoulder here, and I'm squeezing tight for now. We're just stopping right there. Okay, so we'll start here. Bring his head down, lock. Now notice how I keep kind of doing this. With his chin is stuck, I'm just moving his hand around to get my hand in the right exact place. Locking my hands tight. Ball to my shoulder, cross my feet high. Okay, he has two options by the way. Sometimes he'll go out, or sometimes again, like with my student at Zay, he'll roll to his back. Yeah, in which case, I'm on top. Okay, that's the dilemma for him. But for now, we're just gonna do that. Don't be loose. Like, oh, I don't, I don't wanna hurt him. Okay, you try to choke him. See, he's choking. I go, I'm tight, I fall to my shoulder, cross my feet high, not down here. As high as I can. We're not going to choke him yet. We'll talk about the mechanics of all that in a second. Okay, does everybody understand? All right, don't try to choke, but I don't I want you to be tight. If he taps, he taps, but we leave Drago. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right, Dry. I was explaining to them. There are a lot of submissions that you don't have to be equally good at both sides. There's a lot of things you don't have to be equally good at both sides in jiu-jitsu. Some things you have to be good right and left. Some things you could just be very good at one side. Uh, this is one of those. Okay. I do my guillotine almost exclusively with my left arm, so that's a big hint for you guys. Okay. Marcelo Garcia does it almost exclusively with his right arm. Okay. Some people you know, they pass only to one side and not the other. It's okay. It's better to be really good at one, one thing than bad at two. Okay, so find which side kind of works, feels more comfortable and more um, natural to you. And then just practice that one. Because from here I can go this, this equally well. Again, the main thing, just like the standing self-defense, is if I go here and he can tilt me to this side, I don't have the leverage to choke him. Okay? The battle is one, two, three sides. Two, I can win. One, I'm, I'm not going to win. Okay, so as soon as I get here, it's not just play. He tries to tilt me, I've got to fight that ability. If I'm lazy and he starts to try to put this knee down, put the other one up, yeah, no, this side, I don't have it anymore. And this is where you see a lot of times in MMA, Guys would go for the guillotine and then lose it and they get hit because they end up getting taken out or they fall, they just grab the neck and he pulls the head out and then you're right here. Okay, so when I'm flat on my back, I can finish, but he can still maybe tilt me. When I go to the side, he can't. Okay. So I want to put his head on the ground. Now, if you go flat to your back, we'll cover that in a second. But let's talk about the finish. I go, I fall to my side, here. Now I said, I want him, I always think about it, I try to take his nose and touch his belly. So what I'm gonna do here is take my elbow and crunch and point my elbow to his stomach, this way. I'm not pulling. If I fall to my back, I gotta pull. So I'm here, here. Very quick. Okay. By the way, when you add the scoop in, ah, it becomes, we'll cover that in another class. Okay. So I'm here, I fall to my side, close, crunch. I'm just doing that. If I'm flat on my back, don't do this, because you're just going to end up sort of cranking his neck and not really doing anything. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. Now, if you fall to your back, we are going to pull. I fall to my back. I'm going to stretch my legs and bring my hands towards my face. So we have finishes both ways, but the mechanics are different. Okay, so if you find yourself here, you may think you're on your side, you're not. On my side is this shoulder in the air, this elbow down. Mm -hmm. Here, the stretch. I stretch his leg, the legs away. By the way, make sure your legs are high. If they're down here, there's no real stretch. 
I stretch, and I pull. Okay. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Okay. Again, you can finish either way. The mechanics are just going to be a little bit different. Lastly, um, any space you have, if you have a weak grip, you're not very tight, one, he can escape. Two, you're just going to lose a lot of energy. It's just going to go flowing out. So always, the moment I catch a guillotine, I'm already as tight as I can be before I do anything. Did okay. here. I'm already trying to choke him from the second I have it. Okay. Does it make sense? Yes, Roy. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's try it. I'm try. <laughs> so, um, Okay, so we didn't cover this really in, um, I said we are going to cover this, we'll do it really quickly. It's hard to see. I think it should stand up all easier to see. So just like the rear naked choke, I talked about the neck is a V, right? And so with the rear naked choke, we put the V of our arm. So my upper arm went on this side. My lower arm went on this side. With my hand, I use the V there. So what happens is, a lot of people will just put the arm on this side of the neck. Mm -hmm. You see, and then I try to choke, but there's nothing cutting off the blood on this side. And more, it becomes kind of a neck crank, because I'm just pushing his neck. So watch my hand, I curl it around on the other side. I call this the hitchhiker. Okay, so maybe you guys can see from this angle, you guys come around. One way to learn this, yeah, I used to make my students do, is look, my arm follows the V, the, the part faces this way, not down and not across, right? And then, kind of call this a lawnmower, I open my thumb and I pull it back until it catches. So now, I've got pressure on both sides, that's really important. Again, you probably make this mistake. I see these people grab on this side and just pull. And there's no choke. So I go this way and I hook with my thumb. And you'll see, watch. This is a very fast submission. Okay? So if you want to practice, make sure that you're hooking, opening your hand all the way to the other side. You guys will maybe have a better chance to see this or the idea later on yourself. Right on your back, turn this way. Okay, so this is one of my favorite submissions. If you rolled with me, you know I've gone for this. I go here. And the problem is people will do this, but look at my arm. It's only on the bottom side of his neck. If I try to choke him, there's no real choke. There's, I'm only on the bottom, you see? So watch what I have to do. I reach, and I reach, and I dip, and I shoot my hand all the way around. Okay, turn this way. You guys can see. I reach all the way around. That's when I know I have it. Now, you know, I do the choke is there. Okay, so the arms, it's easier because it's a big thing. You can kind of, here, but you really want to snake that part on the other side. That is a thing you will see. A lot of people just end up on this side. And if you're only cutting the blood off on one side, it'll be, the person may even go lightheaded, but they're not gonna go out necessarily. I wanna reach for the other side. So for, just as a simple rule, I just always try to think about choking this side. Because this side will eventually happen. Right, so I, if once I catch this and I start to choke, the other side will handle itself. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, because it is such a fine position, it just takes time to find the right spot. Okay, um, just like anything. Okay, the smaller, the more precise you have to be, the more time it takes to find. Okay, um, so we're going to talk really quickly. One last thing, just so I want you guys to understand. Um, whenever somebody defends something something else opens up. Mm. That's why you can never be closed-minded and think, I'm gonna do this no matter what. 
we want to be very aggressive and focused and try to finish, but if somebody defends, we want to see what they give us. There's always a presence. Somebody takes something away, they always leave something for you. Does that make sense? There's no perfect technique. <clears throat> so if I, he puts his head down at the guillotine, he puts his head up, I'm able to get away. It's that simple, right? Or he puts his head down, he puts his head up, look, now I have his body standing or on the ground. Does that make sense? So if you lose the head, this is one I used to have my students, especially my fighters training, Go for the guillotine, you pull his head out, you kick the head, we're up. And it's that simple. Okay. So, just always want you guys thinking about that. Right? If, even when you're practicing a technique, just in case, if they escape, what would my option be? It doesn't have to be a thousand things. Right? That's just two things. But I use those two things all the time. But are there any questions about this? Do you notice what the whole battle was today? He tilts me this way, he defends. I tilt him that way, I win. That's really ultimately what the battle is. Make sense? Yeah. So one last little detail. That's why it's very important. I don't reach for the guillotine. If his head is up, specifically if his eyes are forward. If his head is down. I can go. But I rarely want to reach for the guillotine with my elbow higher than my shoulder. If I go like this, I'm not going to get it. If I go like this, get it. Lift your head down, lift your head. Okay. So just because you see the neck there, don't just go jumping, try to get it. Recognize when the opportunity presents itself person puts his head down or they compromise their position. What I mean by that is right here. Yeah. Right here. It can be that simple a difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, that I can get his posture. Once his posture is down, I can attack. Does, does that make sense? Okay. You don't have to know a lot of jujitsu, you just have to know a couple binary options. A I do this. Not A, I do this. It's that simple. Okay. If you watch wrestling, a lot of times, you're constantly pulling on the head. Because if he lets my, if he lets the head stay down, you're gonna get front head locked. He pops that head up, right? You're in on the legs. It's really simple. That's really the main two things. Okay, the guy's either gonna be here, attack the body, here, snapping them down. Okay. We're just doing the same thing. We're just adding a choke in because we're meaner. So, any questions? Nope. All right, that's why I don't. That's why I don't.